guys, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Long Fox, and today we have a video full of DIY projects, which I have missed making a video like this. I don't think I've done one for probably like a month and a half or two months or so. Just have been working on a bunch of makeovers in the house. I always get questions on how I come up with my IKEA hacks projects, and I'm literally that person that's walking around with a bunch of random stuff in my cart, piecing it together, stacking things together, flipping them around. I love to play around with IKEA stuff. To me, it's kind of like building blocks to find such a unique custom piece every time I'm there and so I thought I would do another Ikea hacks for you guys. So definitely give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy Ikea hacks down below and if you are brand new to the channel make sure to click that subscribe button it is just right on the screen somewhere. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every week here just like this one on the channel and let's go ahead and dive on into our first project. I follow an Instagram account called Get the Gusto and they have the most beautiful images. I don't know if this is an online store, a gallery, but I find their visuals to be so beautiful and they've recently been framing a lot of their artwork in these like upholstered frames that also have upholstered mats as well. So it's like a fabric frame with a fabric mat and then there's art on the inside. It's definitely a form of pattern play. It's kind of a form of maximalism as well because you're taking something that should be somewhat simple and adding like a ton of pattern, a ton of character to it. And I wanted to transform some super affordable Ikea frames that are actually kind of ugly to start with. We're going to transform them into some beautiful fabric wrapped frames and they're totally customizable as well. So these are the frames that we're going to be using for this project. They have like a faux barnwood look on the edge, but they come in a bunch of different sizes and are pretty affordable at Ikea. They also have a mat on the inside as well. So we're going to pop the mat out and the little plastic insert, set these to the side for a second because I'm actually going to be ironing down my fabric that we're going to be putting on the front of this. You're going to want a nice clean finish and this was just a scrap piece of fabric that I had. So once that was ironed down, I used some Gorilla Spray Adhesive along the entire front and sides of the frame along with the mat as well. And I just placed these on top of my fabric to kind of start attaching to the fabric and drying down that way we can move into the next step of actually wrapping them so I cut out the edge and then we're starting off with the frame here just pressing this along the front um, while that adhesive was still wet and then starting to kind of wrap the edges very similar to a present if you can imagine so I'm just pulling the edge making it nice and taut and then on the back side using a little bit of hot glue to secure that down um, on all four sides we're not worrying about the corners yet you just want to make sure that you're pulling nice and taut that way it looks really smooth in the end so once you have all four sides secured down the corners all you're going to do is just kind of pull them at a diagonal and they naturally flow to the back of the frame and then I just use a little bit of hot glue to secure that down on the back side and then you're gonna cut off all of your extra fabric which in the end is going to make it look nice and seamless and I also go in with my hot glue gun and kind of use the tip just to melt down the edge of that fabric with a little bit of glue to make sure it's not gonna fray anywhere now on the inside you do want to cut out about probably a quarter to a half inch away from the edge. That way you can wrap this fabric onto the inside of the frame. So using a little bit of hot glue, I just tucked those little edges or flaps from the interior where the actual art or the picture goes, and I'm wrapping that fabric up on the inside. Thankfully, this will all be hidden so it doesn't have to look too perfect. Now, when I flipped this over, I was pretty shocked with how great this upholstered frame was looking. For the mat, all you have to do is wrap the interior section. So doing the same exact thing by cutting away from the edge about a half of an inch, snipping the corners, and then just folding those edges over to wrap the inside. And then for the mat, you can just cut away the edge because it's going to be concealed on the inside of the frame. So popping that in right there, and this is how that looked in the end with the mat. And then adding in the art as well. Imagine these in like a little gallery wall or something, but they're also so statementy and can stand alone on their own. I just love the possibilities with these. I also created a larger one. The larger one really shows how great the fabric looks on the mat and the frame. Imagine also mixing up the fabric, like doing a different one on the mat and then a different one on the frame. That could be so cute. next project we are going to dive into is probably one of my favorite Ikea hacks to date. I just love how this project turned out so much. Ever since I moved to LA 10 years ago, I have been going to Ikea and seeing this exact little drawer unit. I forget the name. It's like Mopez or something like that. It's like a little desktop organizer. It can also be used for like children's toys, I feel like. But I always thought there could be a DIY with this because it's such a great base. And so I ended up going to the store, flipping some of the drawers around, realizing I could stack a few of them and turn it into a super cool, almost like mix between an apothecary cabinet and like a wall cabinet slash statement 
striped accent decor storage. I think you're gonna love it, let's dive in. So here's a little look at the storage system that has three drawers in the top, two in the middle, and one at the bottom. They also have these little tab poles, but I noticed if you flip the drawer around, the backside doesn't have that. So I actually wanted to make them look like that, and I decided to purchase three of these and stack them together. I'm using some wood glue to attach them, and you can just use some weighted books on top if you want to, but since I had some clamps, I ended up just clamping these together and letting them cure down. Now, wood glue is much stronger than you think, so it's going to be a perfect bond for this. So I attached the third one on top here, and that's just going to make a taller system. You can also connect up more if you wanted to. You can do six of them and make it wider. Once that was dry, I put the drawers in, and I put all of the small drawers at the top, and then I did the kind of split in half drawers next, and then the largest drawers at the bottom. Now, I'm going to be doing a striped pattern across this, so I'm actually using painter's tape to create the stripes here. The first piece of tape I applied on the edge is kind of going to be my spacer, and then the second piece of tape that I applied is going to be stuck down. I'm applying the spacer back again, so this piece of tape will be used many times, and then I'm adding a new piece, which is going to be another stripe, and you just press that down each time. I'm adding again my spacer back just to space out the stripes in between each, um, and adding another strip of tape across the front. We're basically using the tape itself to create the width of our stripes, so make sure that the tape that you purchase is the width of the stripes that you want to create, because you can actually do this really on any kind of project. You don't have to exactly do this one, you could really do this finish on anything. So once I have it all the way across the entire front of the cabinet, I also actually did the sides and the top. Well, the top and the bottom, it actually flowed from the front, so I just kind of flowed the tape up and down, and then on the sides, I followed the pattern from the front side and just created a nice little tape pattern on the side as well before we went in with our stain, which is in the color called Golden Oak, and you could do whatever stain you'd like. You can also go in with paint as well. I wanted a more natural look, so I went in with a little rag and some stain and started staining the entire front of this, and something I noticed as I was staining this is the wood on the tops and the sides is actually different than the wood on the drawer fronts, because as I started taking the tape off of the drawer fronts, I noticed that the stain did bleed a little bit, but I actually think it looks so cute. It kind of creates a painterly look to the stripe. As you can see here, it just kind of has like a feathered edge on the stripe. The sides though had such a crisp, clean line, which I thought was odd. I thought the whole thing would be made of the same wood, but maybe it wasn't. And then I got to thinking about handles and decided to grab this pack of wooden beads I've had in my stash for a while, and I just pulled out a bunch of these like medium-sized wood beads, and I decided to stain them dark. That way we had like a light wood tone, a medium wood tone, and a dark wood tone, so I just stuck them on the end of a paintbrush and dipped them in some stain, and then just kind of wiped off the excess there. I used a little piece of fabric on the inside of a box to catch any of that excess stain as well from the frames that we created earlier. Now for the placement of the handles on each drawer, I actually just templated the front, and you only have to create three templates since there's only three drawer sizes, and then I folded it in half and kind of created and found the center point of each of them, and then punched a hole. That way I could go through and dot this on the front of all the drawers, and then drill our hole through. That way we can add our handles. So I did the same thing to the smallest drawer size, and then I also, for the largest drawer size, I actually created two handles. So I just folded it in half, and then folded it in half again, and found the center point of that. Then I got some jute cording and kind of cut 12 inch sections and tied about three or four knots to create a stop for the bead, if that makes sense, because we're going to be stringing the two ends of the jute through our bead here, and then the knot is actually going to be caught on the end there, and that's going to be our little handle. So it kind of has this natural feel to it. I love the dark wood with the little knotted ball at the end. I think it's really cute, especially added with the stripes on the cabinet. And the vibes just vibe as they're supposed to. So this is the little handle here. I created a bunch of these. I think I needed like 21 of them, and I just threaded the two strands through the hole that we created, and then tied three or four knots again on the back side there. This was just a super easy DIY handle. I wanted something small and petite that didn't overpower the stripes or take away from them, so I love how this just kind of accented it. I added two little D-rings to the back side of this so we could hang it on the wall, and I styled it like this. I need to find the perfect spot for it in my home. But we have one more project to dive on into, and that is actually a hanging pendant light. I feel like in design, one of the most universal lights is the rice paper pendant. You can use that in so many different styles of decor. It's a classic Noguchi design, so it's been around for quite a while, and they're also kind of redone at so many stores as well. But I had actually never seen like a patterned version of that. I wanted to create kind of like an orb light, but I wanted to have some pattern, some texture, some interest. So yes, it's super easy and let's get started. 
For this project, we're gonna be using this light here from Ikea, and there's actually an oval version, which is the one you're seeing here, and there's also a round version. So if you want that, you can get the round one. And it has this fabric cover that basically goes on the outside of a wire cage. So I took the fabric cover out of the package and I picked up some printed jersey from Joann's. And these are really cute printed jersey options. They're like $8 a yard. So I got one yard of each of those just because I wasn't really sure which one I wanted to go for. And I opted for this green one here and I just folded it in half and lining up our template along the folded edge and then cutting with about a half inch of seam allowance along all of the edges there. So I'm just cutting it out as shown here, leaving a little bit of edge. And then once you have your piece cut out, you're going to have a longer strip of fabric that you're going to want to sew that edge up on to create a tube. So I'm actually going to be folding these right sides together, meaning that the correct sides of your fabrics are together like this, popping it in my sewing machine and just sewing along that edge there to create essentially a tube of fabric. And it should look a little something like this, but we are going to need to actually sew a channel in the top and bottom of our tube here. That way we could cinch them. So I actually folded over the fabric just as shown and I sewed along the left edge. That way I could create a little pocket that we could thread some string through or the little actual metal piece for the light, which I'll share with you in just a second here. But I sewed a channel essentially on the top and the bottom of this piece, which was super easy um, and simple to create. So this is what the tube looks like once you're all done with that. And this was that metal ring that comes with the light. You're just going to flip this through one of those channels that you sewed on the bottom. And then on the top there, you're going to actually slip through the cord that it came with, which would have been in the blue fabric piece, but I ended up taking it out. And then just kind of maneuvering this together as you would the creation of the light, which is super simple. You're just going to wrap the fabric around it, tighten it up, add it to a light cord. And that is how I finished off this fabric pendant light. Today's Ikea hacks video. I hope that you enjoy this one and give it a big thumbs up if you did and let me know in the comment section below which one of these projects was your favorite. I think mine. It's a tie between the wrapped frames because I can see myself using that in so many design projects in the future. Like if I have a boring frame and it's simple enough to wrap it in fabric, that is something I will be doing from now on. But I also love that striped cabinet. The wooden bead poles are so cute and I love like the little exposed jointery on the edges of all the drawers. It's a great little piece. So yes, thank you so much for spending some of your Sunday with me today and I will catch you all in my next one. If you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and all the links are down below. You can also check out my online store, lonefox.com. Brand new stuff coming every single week. Tons and tons of home decor over there. So yeah, take a peek and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.